Hello dear students and thank you for being with me in this uh, presentation where I'm going to tell you about NTCP model uh, developed by Aaron Shenhar and Dov Duvir uh, and uh, uh, they have been elaborating this model for example in the 2007 book uh, Reinventing Project Management. Well, um, NTCP refers to four dimensions, novelty, technology, complexity and pace. And these dimensions are used to evaluate the character of a project. And accordingly, the idea is that based on where uh, your project is positioned in these four dimensions, uh, you select an appropriate management style for that project. Well, um, in their book, uh, they present uh, an evaluation of Denver International Airport project. Well, uh, you can see in this picture how uh, Denver uh, Airport construction project uh, was positioned in these four dimensions. Uh, for example, novelty the dimension from derivative only small uh, changes to what has been previously done to breakthrough, which is kind of a new to the world uh, type of a project uh, where experience uh, doesn't exist and where there is significant uncertainty. The technology dimension uh, then uh, from uh, low tech to high tech and even super high tech. And then the complexity dimension this applies this complexity to both the project's end product and the project organization. How many parts there are and how different the parts are and how uh, difficult in a way it is to integrate them. So from assembly to system and then even a rather complex array. And then uh, the fourth uh, dimension, the pace, uh, which comes uh, from the urgency that the project has from regular, fast, really time critical or even blitz, which is kind of a very, uh, very, very fast uh, project. Okay, uh, Denver construction, airport construction actually um, uh, was started in 1989 and uh, it is really a significant big airport and uh, that airport used uh, very new novel technology and, and very uh, high-tech te technology for uh, uh, the baggage handling system. Uh, however, uh, the project was managed as a construction project. And now when I bring to this picture the automatic bag handling system as a sub-project, Senhar's argument was uh, that uh, the management of the project uh, didn't understand and didn't, couldn't uh, isolate this baggage handling um, system as a separate part and separate project that should have been managed differently because of its different character from a construction project. So you cannot um, apply the normal construction project management practices to such um, a complex system, which is high tech, and uh, you should uh, accordingly manage, uh, um, tailor your management style uh, for for that type of a sub project. Well, um, in 1991, when the construction project already ongoing, uh, uh, the project uh, uh, subcontracted the baggage handling system from BAE. Uh, automatic systems and they had uh, experience from uh, such baggage handling systems but they never had built such a large system uh, before. Um, then um, they, when, when the baggage handling system was reported to be uh, 11 months late in 1994 then even the project management had to subcontract uh, a more traditional baggage handling system for backup. 
And uh, finally the airport opened in 1995, 16 months late, and 1.5 billion US uh, dollars uh, over budget. Okay, another uh, example is the space shuttle project where Senhar uh, had evaluated that the actual management style matched uh, this kind of a profile. Um, but his argument also was, or Senhar and Veer's argument in their book was that uh, that uh, project should have managed uh, as a project with uh, very high novelty, that is kind of a breakthrough and a super high tech project. And that management style would have maybe hindered the project from suffering from those problems that the space shuttle project uh, finally had. Well, now I'm going to go through uh, these four dimensions by using the World Trade Center project that also Senhar and Veer uh, use in their uh, book. Let's uh, uh, talk a little bit uh, about uh, the novelty first. Well, um, actually The project was a construction project actually and uh, it uh, can be considered as a platform. It was not a breakthrough okay, construction, uh, skyscrapers have been uh, built uh, before. But uh, rather special in this project was uh, that uh, it was uh, connected in a very uh, complex manner to transportation systems that is New York. Uh, Manhattan Metro Line and also all these parking facilities, uh, also uh, the shopping mall and uh, other functions that were there were uh, in the building cost that uh, it was a uh, little bit more special than uh, a typical uh, skyscraper. Uh, actually, if I tell here a little bit about the background of, uh, of, of this project, uh, the first uh, initiations of uh, building a World Trade Center were uh, up already in 1943. Uh, but then in 1949 uh, this development was put on hold. Until in 50s when there was an increase of economic health uh, in Manhattan. So David Rockefeller uh, suggested that uh, New York and New Jersey Port Authority would build a World uh, Trade Center that would a kind of a uh, encouragement or tribute, uh, tribute to uh, world peace uh, by promoting international business and also bringing more stimul stimulation uh, to the economic affairs in no lower Manhattan. Well, um, there were also quite uh, interesting uh, commercial issues there. The Port Authority negotiated with the city that uh, wanted and finally had uh, really uh, yearly annual payment uh, uh, from uh, the uh, owner of the um, uh, real estate uh, for uh, getting rent from the tenants for, for offices and also um, there was uh, 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 kind of a uh, understanding that the real estate tax was uh, in rise, which also caused the rise of uh, the rents of the tenants and, uh, and, and so on. So very many uh, uh, economic uh, issues that had to be solved. Well, uh, in 1960, the Port, New York Port Authority started the project. Um, uh, actually, it uh, hired 1962 uh, the lead arch architect uh, uh, Minoru Yamasaki, uh, who first uh, planned uh, 80 story twin buildings there uh, as the kind of a world center um, uh, manifest. But then, because the Port Authority's requirement was to have uh, 
930,000, that is almost 1 million square meters of office space there. Uh, they had to uh, build a kind of a higher building, which is 110 uh, story high. Well, um, now I already explained you something about uh, the novelty dimension here in the picture. Now I'm uh, telling you something about the technology of, of the World Trade Center. Perhaps the uh, quite uh, most advanced technology uh, was the reverse bathtub uh, method that they used in building uh, the uh, center. And the reverse bathtub uh, meant that uh, because uh, uh, the foundations of the uh, building had to be built uh, beyond uh, ground surface, uh, 20 meters to the bedrock, and uh, also uh, uh, the uh, building and the foundations had to be um, uh, protected from the Hudson River water flowing in. Uh, they used a technology that was first developed by an Italian firm uh, of kind of insulating the uh, river water from uh, the foundations. And the technology was based on putting, a, uh, on digging there a trench, putting then there a, a slurry mixture of bentonite and water, and then uh, afterwards uh, taking uh, uh, the trench again open and pouring uh, concrete, uh, iron cages and concrete in, which kind of made uh, the slurry to escape from the holes. This took some 14 months. Uh, to uh, build uh, this kind of a, a reverse bathtub uh, thing uh, for keeping the Hudson River out. Well, uh, then because of the extremely high uh, rise bil uh, building or high building uh, that they built, uh, even higher than the Empire State Building, so uh, there needed to be uh, 100 elevators in the building to provide service for the 50,000 people working in, in that building. Also high strength steel is part of the kind of a technology in the project's end product. And uh, then uh, one challenge was that there was uh, 10 to 15 meters sway at the top of the building. So uh, a kind of a uh, design needed to be used uh, that uh, um, made people to be comfortable at the top of the building so uh, th so that the occupants of the building would tolerate the swaying of the building. Also uh, the top floor windows were of special design and uh, the top floor, for, uh, floor window design was even changed uh, in the middle of the project to make it more uh, durable and, uh, and, and appropriate for the purpose. So that's about the technology. Now about the complexity. In the property of World Trade Center there are seven buildings, not only the two towers. The elevators, the heating, the air conditioning, transportation, communication, and then there was the lower Manhattan's largest shopping mall. Seven story uh, parking house and interface, uh, complex interface with uh, public transportation. So that is a kind of a complexity of actual com complexity of the end product. But more than that, uh, there was also kind of a complexity in the organization that made the end product. So uh, bureaucratic control systems for the coordination of uh, the project was needed. There were hundreds of subcontractors. Both authority employed a large construction company together with architects and uh, real estate personnel. A group of 20 engineers, two architects. The lead architect was, the, was Minoru Yamasaki and then associate architects were from Emery Roth and Sons. 
And this organization was enabling a complex in integration of subunits. And also meetings uh, with the board of the directors of both authority were conducted monthly, but then there was also a lower uh, level uh, review meetings uh, that took place on a uh, weekly or even on a daily basis. Well, now about uh, the pace. It took six years of planning from something like 19... Uh, 60 to 1967 and it also took six years to complete from 1967 to 1973 when uh, it uh, started its operation. Well, uh, there was a one million dollar daily cost of work delays, so the cost of delays were significant. And we could consider that this is not a kind of a regular project. Uh, uh, Shenhar and Veer had uh, evaluated that this, it is kind of a fast competitive project uh, because of uh, building such a uh, uh, challenging and big complex system uh, in just only six years or so. Well, uh, this was my presentation about the NTCP model that can be used on evaluating uh, the characters of projects that give advice us then to uh, plan how uh, that project can be managed in an appropriate manner. So I urge you to think about each of these dimensions and what each of these dimensions uh, would require for management style, depending on where the project is positioned in that uh, dimension. Hey, uh, let's continue discussion of this uh, uh, in the in class. So thank you for uh, being with me here and listening uh, me uh, my presentation here. See you in the class. Bye.